at home. My little daughter was crying with my husband. And we got ourselves somewhat together and left. Of course, you get there and you can't see her. They can't tell you anything. The nurse came out to tell us that you got to be prepared. She doesn't look the same. She's got all kinds of things on her, but I don't care what they say. They can't prepare you for looking at her. You go in there, it's like, oh my God, and that's my daughter. Marissa suffered a left radius and ulnar fracture. She also suffered from bilateral femur fractures, but the worst injury was to her brain. Marissa suffered catastrophic head injuries. Doctors at Harborview performed multiple procedures to save her life. MRIs taken at Harborview help illustrate the exact portions of Marissa's brain that were injured. She had a bilateral frontal lobe hemorrhage, a right temporal lobe hemorrhage, a right parietal lobe hemorrhage, and a right occipital lobe hemorrhage. She had a corpus callosum hemorrhage. and bilateral basal ganglia hemorrhage. It's my medical opinion after evaluating this patient that she needs to receive physical, occupational, and speech therapy at least five times a week, well into the future. The basis for my opinions are the fact that she's already developing flexion contractures, and if she doesn't receive the type of preventative physical medicine, then the contractures are gonna get worse. And because she has consciousness and awareness, she can have a pain experience, so it's important for her to receive these therapies. The other reason why it's important for her to receive these therapies is because I don't think the window of therapeutic opportunity is closed. She is showing marked improvement since the time she was admitted. My daughter's in a nursing home and I go there every day because I feel that she needs the stimulation. I think if she was just left there sitting there, she would just, just get depressed. I just, I go there, I have been told mental stimulation, so I'm there every morning. Some mornings, yeah, it's really hard to get up out of bed. You just go, oh, I'm so tired, but I have to do this for my daughter. I want her to get better. And so I go there and I look at books. We play with puzzles. And it's really kind of, I don't think she likes it, but baby toys. <laughs> But, you know, she is, they say mental stimulation, so I'm going back to the basics, doing the most simple things. At least there's some communication with her eyes, and that's, that's so good. And that's one thing that keeps me going, because I know that she knows I'm there for her. And, you know, if she was just laying there, it'd be harder. But when I come in, she, I go, hi, sweetie, and she immediately look, looks up and gives me that look and sometimes smiles. And, I know that she's in there, she's just frustrated that 
she can't communicate with us, but someday, maybe eventually she'll be able to yell at me, no, or stop, or mom. And boy, I keep telling people, when that day comes, I think all of Marysville will hear me. Marissa obviously uh, is unemployable. Um, the nature and extent of her impairment is so severe uh, that she retains no realistic or practical wage earning capacity. I hate to say that she's being warehoused. It's not a very kind term, but she's basically at a skilled nursing facility um, and she's not receiving the type of rehab that somebody with these types of injuries normally receives. And I think it's real important while she's young to get it, to get this going. I want to bring her home. I want to get her up walking. I want her to have a quality of life. It's just not fair. She needs to be able to do her friend things. And I'd love to be able to eventually get her to art school and get her back on track, but you know, one day at a time. It's especially hard when she's going to be 21 soon. And she can't go out and party with her friends. I just really wanted her to be in my wedding, and I was just so excited to get married now. And I invited her, and I want her to be, like, in the front row, but I really just really want her to be my bridesmaid. And but knowing how she would feel, I just, I couldn't do that to her. One of the best things that happened just recently, her best friend got married. She, we got to take her to the wedding. Now it makes me more confident that maybe I can get her out a little bit more. I knew she'd do it well and she would, she would pursue it and stuff, especially after the first job she had, I was kind of wondering, you know, was it going to be good? But she just really came out of her shell. She was really becoming a young lady and a lot more independent. And I knew that, you know, that she was heading somewhere. Well, one thing I can just, I mean, really just say is she's 20 years old. Her life is forever changed. It's forever changed in a blink of an eye.